Good morning. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It is Wednesday, January 11, 2023. Happy New Year. I will note for the record that all three commissioners are present. Uh, did they promote you yet? TSD, could you please uh, promote um, Commissioner Githens to panelist on Zoom? Thank you so much. And now we'll begin with the commissioner's public statement read by Commissioner Jones. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear. And we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you so much. Our next agenda item, item three, is election of officers. I'd like to nominate uh, Penny Githens as president of the board, and I will serve as vice president. A second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. And with that, I will turn the meeting over to our new president. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, well then it's time for department updates. Um, Lori Kelly. Here she comes. Yes, hello, good morning. Um, currently Monroe County is in the medium COVID-19 community level, although hospital admissions have started lowering this week. Um, as a reminder, there are many ways in which we can protect ourselves. This includes staying up to date with vaccinations, monitoring for symptoms and frequent testing, wearing a mask and performing frequent hand hygiene. Uh, we are seeing increases of the XBB 1.5 variant. Symptoms have not changed with this variant and seem to be similar to the flu, although it is thought to be more transmissible. Uh, vaccinations are still available at the public health clinic. The phone number is 812-353-3244 for appointments. Thank you. Any questions or comments? None for me? No, I don't. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, we want to urge everyone to take precautions and to make sure that they get that additional booster if they haven't already. So are there any other departments that have updates today? Seeing none, uh, let's move on to public comment. This is for items not on our agenda. Um, there's a limit of three minutes. And if you wish to speak, please state your name and whether or not you're a Monroe County uh, resident. And so first up, I see Mr. MG. Good morning, commissioners, distinguished staff. This is Christopher M.G. from the Greater Bloomington Chamber of Commerce and a Monroe County resident. I hope you all had a wonderful recess uh, during the holidays, and it's good to be back in these stories, storied halls. Today, I come before this body to state our continued support for the expansion of the Monroe County Convention Center. We've collected close to $15 million in the food and beverage tax over the last five years, but have seen little progress. However, with the commissioner's creation of the Capital Improvement Board, the CIB, last November, we find a path forward. A supermajority of the city council uh, members supported such a plan that includes a CIB as the form of governance. By my calculation, we have elect 18 elected officials in support of this and only two outliers who remain skeptical. This is a mandate. Now is the time for the commissioners to take a leadership role for the continued momentum that has been created. The next step of action is for appointments from the county made to the CIB board. This will further provide a signal to those disbelievers that the tide has turned. Also, these appointments will provide the anchor of community professionals that will provide the tough making decision body moving forward. The chamber has long cried wolf on a real possibility that the state legislature intervenes 
to seize the, the 1% food and beverage tax. At last Friday, Chamber's legislative preview luncheon, Representative Matt Pierce cited Senate Bill 37 that has already been filed that puts the county's convention center expansion in jeopardy. This is the same piece of legislation, legislation that passed the, House, uh, passed the Senate last year, but due to the efforts of the Chamber and its partners, it was stopped in the House. We no doubt will, will not be as fortunate this time around. To quote Representative Pierce, if we don't have something going, I could see them just repealing it and saying, well, you didn't, have, you didn't use it, you haven't used it, you've had it for so many years, so we're done now. I don't wanna see this. I thank you for your time this morning, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Good morning, commissioners and members of the public. My name is Tammy Weichel Cassidy, and I'm a resident here in Monroe County um, in the old uh, Clear Creek Valley. Um, I'm here today because of the, you know, continued flooding experiences that we have in our old Clear Creek Valley. Um, the neighbors and I had a meeting last week, and we came up with what we feel are some actual items that we would like to request some assistance um, by the county and in, in helping us to you know, rectify some of the pro continued problems that we have. Um, first, we'd like uh, to have you create a sustainable flood mitigation plan for the old Clear Creek Valley. This area is identified in the long range stormwater improvement plan as Clear Creek dash Jackson Creek on page 23. The watershed is ranked as a high priority on the ranking matrix as the quote, second highest number of issues documented in any watershed within Monroe County, end quote. Um, there, I separated uh, possible ways that we could use assistance um, in, our, in our discussion. Um, first uh, would be simplistic ordinances uh, and planning objectives that make it possible to bring buildings up to standards for FEMA state and local ordinance. Um, seems that it's easier to, to go to the state. They have a simplistic che checklist and they're, and they're very helpful uh, with that. And I don't think that's the case here locally, hasn't been the experience right now. Um, we need an extended sewer main along South Rogers. There are several st uh, structures, homes, and a couple businesses there. It's been mentioned by our local planning department that septics will not be acceptable, that will have to be on city sewer. So in order to improve a dozen homes along there, we don't have that. Um, property owners need financial assistance in order to bring structures up to the FEMA state and local standards. Buildings need to be elevated. They need new foundations. Um, some of them have basements, which is a travesty in a, in a floodplain. Um, they have furnaces that are either in the basement or in the crawl spaces. Um, so they need updating to their heating systems and so forth. Or the county could choose to buy out all properties or some properties in order to create detention areas. Um, we also suggest some road infrastructure, replacements of the, a few bridges on South Rogers, Church Lane, and Jackson Creek. Our last flood peeled the pavement right off of Jackson Creek and just assist with cleanup because there's like a wooded area on the south end of Clear Creek and everything that washes down the creek gets stuck in those trees. There are, I mean, there's been tractors um, trailers flipped over, like to pull behind for your lawn tractor. There's a dishwasher sitting there right now. There are culverts in the creek, oddly, down there south. Um, there are old railway abutments and so and, forth. And I just note yeah, that the yes, I just have one last comment if it's okay, it's a very brief. Um, the desired results would be to follow objectives of the long range stormwater improvement plan. And I quote, improve public safety, reduce damages to property and public infrastructure, avoid economic disruption and losses 
and reduce human suffering and protect the environment. Thank you for listening today. Thank you. Um, I see that um, online that we have Maria Douglas. Would, would you like, would you please um, unmute yourself and TSD, will you allow that to her to speak? Go ahead, please. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So good morning, commissioners and uh, the public. I just have a couple things that I wanted to uh, come here to say and actually ask a question since uh, these um, community or public comments are for things that are not on the agenda. I am concerned about the uh, situation with the Monroe County Women's Commission that we had um, spoken to Commissioner Thomas about during office hours about the reduction of the seats on that commission without consultation or uh, conversation with the actual commissioners uh, that sit on that commission. And that, you know, resulted in uh, several um, active members rolling off. And I'll just be transparent. I am one of them. I am not about, you know, that this is Maria's uh, seat, but it is a reduction of uh, women uh, that are ready to take some action and represent the females um, in the county. So uh, that leads me into, and then we received an email uh, right before our meeting um, uh, earlier this uh, last, or this month, I believe, and it was that I could attend, because, oh, my timer's not going, just so you know, um, so that I could attend, um, but, you know, I, I need, the, there's a whole process that needs to happen. I, I was a council uh, appointee, so the council would need to appoint me again and approve and vote and all of that. So these emails that are going on in the background, I it just, it makes me nervous and anxious. I don't understand, you know, how... And, and that brings me to another point. I'm kind of new, you know, to politics, but I've been paying attention because I'm trying to be a person of action in the community. And I just, I also signed on to the Criminal Justice Reform Committee meeting uh, the, earlier this week, and I was just uh, shocked um, as as a just a person <laughs> that. Um, you know, is not a political person per se. Um, and just the lack of communication, transparency and such, you know, with the with the Women's Commission, even though it's really small potatoes, um, you know, compared to what's going on, you know, with our jail situation, um, not that women are small potatoes, but maybe that, you know, the commission is small potatoes for right now. Um, you know, it just seems to be a, a pervasive um, concern um, with the commissioners as far as transparency and communication. So I just hope that we can all work together, you know, to to uh, do the best work that we can and to be the best people and community members that we can. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Douglas. Um, I hope that we'll be able to uh, look at some stuff in our work session about the Women's Commission. So, yes, we're we're not ignoring your concerns. Okay, is there anyone else? Seeing none, um, let's move on to item number six, approval of minutes. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move approval of the minutes for December 14th, 2022. Second. Are there any corrections or additions? None for me. Seeing no. none. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes from December 14th, 2022, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. I will, uh, oh, next item, approval of the claims docket. I move approval of the claims docket accounts payable January 4th, 2023, accounts payable January 11th, 2023, payroll December 29th, 2022, and payroll for January 13th, 2023. Second. Any comments or concerns? Well, we had a concern about um, one of the claims and the total was $156, well, two claims, two claims, and the total was $156. So 
Um, I think we should remove that and ask for further information uh, yeah. from the auditor's office. And then um, if we can um, do that, I think that would be useful. Those are claims from January 4th, 2023, and they were for parking mm -hmm. um, in Indianapolis, correct? Yeah. You may want to ask Amy to read off the numbers and, and such. Okay. Would you please? Okay. Good morning, commissioners. Accounts payable for January 2023 is $5,166,805.21. Uh, accounts payable for January 11th, 2023 is $1,656,318.44. Payroll for December 29th, 2022 is $1,922,661.65. Payroll for January 13th, 2023 is $1,879,314.53. Thank you. So um, I would like to make a motion to amend the accounts payable for January 4th. Yes, uh, 2023 to $5,166,649.21. So that's the removal of the $156. Correct. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay. Yeah, and just And just so it's clear in the minutes, this is for those parking items, and those are the claims that... that you guys are wanting more review on correct more information it's, it's yes. a total of two claims right right we're we're not denying it at this point we're just asking for more information so we're delayed take public comment and then a vote on the motion on the amend is there any public comment on the motion to amend seeing none um can we have a vote on the motion to amend the total for January the 4th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion to amend passes three to zero. Is there any other discussion or public comment on the claims docket? As amended. Seeing none, uh, call for a vote on approval of the claims the amended claims docket and accounts accounts payable and payroll. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. I will note for the record that we have reports from the clerk for November of 2022, from the treasurer for November of 2022, and um, report from weights and measures, which covers November the 16th, 2022 through December 15th, 2022. Now let's move on to new business. First item. All right, I move approval of a memorandum of the joint executive session meeting of the Board of Commissioners and County Council. Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? No, no, any public comment? If not, call for a vote on the approval of the memorandum of joint executive session meeting of the Board of Commissioners and the County Council. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. I move approval of the uh, Hartman and Williams engagement letter, fund name County General, fund number 1000, the amount of $130,000. Second. Thank you. And we have Ms. Gregory here to talk with us. Good morning, commissioners. So this is just um, a, an updated contract as our previous engagement letter has expired. Hartman and Williams is the um, accounting firm that assists with um, our gap reporting. So um, yeah, this is just kind of a housekeeping item. I don't think anything has really changed in the contract and it has full well, in the engagement letter and it has been vetted by Jeff, Mr. Cockrell. Any comments or questions? None. 
I noticed that they in the letter that they had given us the price for the next several years, which is nice that it won't be going up. Yes. We're, but we're just voting on the one for this year. Okay. Um, is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of the Hartman and Williams engagement letter signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes three to zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next item. Move approval of an agreement with extra space storage fund name, public health emergency preparedness fund number 8104. Second. Thank you. And I believe we have a call again from Ms. Kelly. You're muted. Thank Sorry you. about that. Uh, this is just a housekeeping item. Um, the Storage Express was being bought out by Extra Space Storage. Uh, the lease will be effective as of January 7th. Uh, this doesn't change any of the processing with the cost or the bills, um, just the change in the vendor. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments? No. I don't have any either, so seeing none. Um, call for a vote on motion. Yeah, public comment. Oh, public comment, please. Sorry, I'm still learning. It's okay. Here. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. See none. Uh, call for a vote on motion for to renew the extra space storage agreement. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. Move approval of uh, agreement with Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis grant, uh, fund name, syringe services program, fund number 9130 in the amount of $25,000. Second. Thank you. And again, we have Ms. Kelly. Uh, yes, so the health department has received an award letter for $25,000. This is new grant money. This is for our syringe service program. This money strictly covers the cost of syringes um, for the harm reduction program. Uh, we do contract with the Indiana Recovery Alliance to operate the syringe service program. Uh, generally, this program is available seven days a week. It operates out of both the Indiana Recovery Alliance or via the mobile outreach van. Thank you. Any questions or concerns from no. my colleagues? Commissioner Jones? No. Commissioner Thomas? No. Is there any public comment on this item? I will note that the harm reduction um, is important for re reducing, especially transmission of diseases and that people that come in for harm reduction are much more likely to eventually seek treatment for any substance use disorder that they have. And so I am strongly in support of this program and very, very proud of the fact that Monroe County has something like this going. So, um, this, yes. <laughs> um, so at this point, um, call for a vote on the motion to. Um, did you yeah, I did public okay. public Thank comment. You. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, call for a vote on the motion to approve the Health Foundation of Greater Indianapolis grant. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. <laughs> I move approval of uh, an agreement with uh, Eubanks and Associates PLLC represent, a representation agreement regarding Houston South litigation funding County General fund number 1000-31211-0277, the amount of 152 up to $260 per hour. Second. Thank you. And I believe we have Mr. Schilling. If not, Mr. Cockrell? Uh, yes, this is a uh, continuation of uh, the litigation we have about the uh, Lake Monroe uh, watershed and keeping the water quality um, what, uh, in, in good shape. Um, I think the executive session that we talked about at the beginning of this, where we did the memory, is we discussed this with the, the county council. Um, this is a little bit different than our original agreement in that we, uh, in that, 
our original, we paid more of the share of the cost for this. This this one, we only pay a third of a third of these fees. And so, um, in order to keep moving forward with this, it was recommended at that that we uh, approve this agreement. Thank you. Questions or comments, Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? Yeah, um, first, just a comment that I'm glad that we're standing up for all of the residents and businesses of Monroe County <laughs> and the availability of uh, clean water is vital uh, for all of us. And so I'm proud to be part of this uh, effort to protect um, our lake and, and um, our drinking water supply. Um, I did have a question about when this goes to council or did it go last night because I, I joined the council meeting late last night. I am not certain, but I can find that out and get back. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any public comment on this item? I would like to say that I was dismayed to see in the paper last week that the Forest Service is planning to go ahead um, with the work they had planned in the Houston South region of the Hoosier National Forest. And, you know, in talking with people that are much more knowledgeable than I am about things like this, if Forest Service would just leave it alone, it will return to its natural state of being a hardwood forest. We don't need to be doing clear cutting and application of herbicides and burning and the, the uh, kind of disruption to the soil that happens with heavy logging. And so I'm pleased that, that we are making this effort to um, ensure the ongoing quality of our drinking water. It impacts over 120,000 people in Monroe County. And so um, I'm pleased that we're that we're continuing to work with uh, Eubanks Associates. So at this point, um, call for a vote on the motion to um, continue with Eubanks and Associates PLLC representation regarding the Houston South litigation. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of resolution 2023-01, Monroe County Code Update. Second. Thank you. And I uh, don't see Mr. Schilling. I am more than happy to handle this one as well. <laughs> I know this one a little bit better. Uh, th this comes to you every six months or so. Um, in, the, in this time since the last update, you have made changes to our Monroe County Code. Um, so what we're voting on today is just to update the code itself. Everything that's in here has already been approved by the by the appropriate body. So this is just so when we put it together, we get it to the libraries and we put it on our website and things like that. It is as accurate as of today. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Jones, any comments or questions? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? No. Is there any public comment? on this item. This is just kind of cleaning things up within our code. Okay, so I have no comment. Uh, call for vote on the resolution 2023-1 Monroe County Code update. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. Move approval of a, uh, to grant an easement from the Convention Center Building Corp to Duke Energy Indiana LLC. Second. Thank you. Again, Mr. Cockrell. Yes, and, and I think we, we as being when we've been discussing the convention center, it talked about this probably pre, pre pandemic, um, where the Duke Energy is putting a new higher intensity uh, electric line down the V line trail. And uh, we had uh, the city and the, the county, when we were having in the joint commission, had asked Duke to explore going. Uh, once it got to the convention center property going west, instead of continuing along the B-Line trail um, for um, B-Line and uh, tourism reasons, this is the easement that's required for them to, to do that. Um, this has gone through the uh, building corporation and they approved it yesterday. And this is uh, essentially this easement is going to be running over a couple other underground easements. Um, if we do ever do a convention center expansion west of the B line, because this is running a west, we'll have to work with Duke on how to how to work with these utility lines there. But if we were going west, we'd have to work with them on how we're going to do it if it ran along the B line trail. 
Uh, so that's what this is. Um, and uh, I think Duke is ready to get rolling. And we've been working on this probably for about nine to 10 months, trying to figure out all the, <clears throat> find where all the current easements are, figuring out, you know, is it the building corporation's property that we lease or is it, is it ours? And so this is, uh, this, this has taken a while to get, get to this point. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Any comments or questions? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? Thank you for your diligence and uh, <laughs> tenacity. <laughs> yes, it was, it was a bit of work, <laughs> definitely. Okay, is there any public comment on this? Yeah, so Randy Cassidy, the, I think working with the utility is a wonderful thing to try to ensure that we're moving forward in the convention center. The one thing I would ask in regards to, since we make the resolutions in the e, these easements that may move on for 30 or 50 years, if there was any way it could be put in, that in the future, if Duke has to move, there's no charge to the county for a reason in the in the future. And the reason I, I ask that question is simply the matter of we don't once an easement's there and Duke is ran out of North Carolina. They do a great job, good partners. But 40 years from now, it may be a situation where they need to, they want to charge us to move something if something changes. And since we're granting a prescriptive easement that gives them the ability to do it, it'd be nice from a community standpoint to not have to get charged 30 or 50 years from now when the costs have escalated substantially and it impacts our projects as a community. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I would just respond that we certainly had that conversation. And uh, and for, I, I think the, and I think the main reason is, is because this is kind of done at a request of the government to, to move it here, as opposed to keeping it where they had the, already had the access to that, that we weren't able to do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Casting. Any other public comment? If not, uh, call for a vote on uh, motion to grant easement from the Convention Center Building Corporation to Duke Energy, Indiana, LLC. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of an agreement with Bledsoe Rieger Cooper James Engineering Service, fund name 2017 GO bond, fund number 4810-47151, an amount not to exceed $36,460. Second. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Whitmer. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. There you go. <laughs> what this is, what is what this is about is in my experience. Good planning usually will result in better result or better results. So good planning and better results. Uh, this is a project to expand the limestone greenway, and the highway department has secured funding to replace vehicular bridge 83, which is near the limestone greenway. Uh, the county engineer's thoughts are we can pick that bridge up and move it to the limestone greenway. This is just the first part to have conceptual designs and cost opinions of expanding the trail and also to have uh, preliminary engineering reports for the bridge to make sure it fits in the location that everyone believes high, high confidence that it will fit. So this is the first part of that. Um, do you have any questions? Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? No questions. I, it's a great idea. I, I, I've often walked down to the end of the limestone greenway and look out over where I imagine this bridge is going to be going. So I'm in favor of this. And, and a lot of people have gone to that same spot as you as you described. The bridge will not traverse that entire area. It will actually be dropped lower, which means we'll have to go around. That's why there's a little new trailhead so we can get onto the bridge and to continue. But it still will be wonderful. Definitely, definitely. It's a beautiful, beautiful um, setup down there. Are there. Is there any public comment on this item? If not, call for a vote on a motion with the Bledsoe Rigger Cooper James Engineering Service contract. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item. 
I move approval of a maintenance agreement and licensing and maintenance agreement with Esri Arc GIS fund name, cumulative capital fund number 1138 in the amount of $31,253.56. Second. And we have Mr. Crone here to present this. Good morning, everyone. Greg Crown, Technical Services Department. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just time to renew our license and maintenance agreement with Esri to provide us the ArcGIS software used by planning, building, the surveyor, and highway. Uh, this agreement is uh, exactly the same as last year's agreement. There has been no changes in the number of licenses or anything issued, and this is good for a period of one year. Thank you. Questions or comments? No. Mr. Jones, Commissioner Thomas? No. Any public comment? Seeing none, call for a vote on the uh, licensing and maintenance agreement with Esri Arc GIS. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you, Mr. Crown. Thank you, Commissioner. Next item. I move approval of an agreement, a grant agreement, Hopa Light LLC uh, with the JDAI grant, uh, fund name JDAI performance grant, fund number 9163 in the amount of $2,150. And so, I, thank you. I think we have Ms. McAfee with us virtually. Please hello. tell us. About you do. Um, Hopa Light has been partnering with our probation department, oh my goodness, for probably a year and a half, maybe two. Um, the training that was originally provided is called Trust-Based Relational Intervention, which TBRI for short. And what this contract does is allows us to continue consultation with Amy Abel, who is the um, executive director, I guess is a title, of that agency. And what we're working on is really implementing the elements of TBRI which include things like self-regulation and felt safety, um, ensuring that when we work with our community that we show up in our best form and that we help others uh, reach that milestone as well. Thank you. Commissioner Jones, any questions or comments? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? Uh, this is a wonderful program. I'm so glad that um, this worked out. This just goes hand in hand with some of the other things that we're trying to put into place in our community. So very pleased about this. Any public comment? Seeing none, call for a vote on the, the um, grant, the Hopalite LLC JDI grant. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. Move approval of a memorandum of understanding with Centerstone, fund name JDAI performance grant fund number 9163, an amount of $3,150. Second. Thank you. Again, we have Ms. McPhee. You do. I think you've got me for a couple more, too. Um, so this is a really exciting partnership with Centerstone. We um, through some of the JDAI work that we've been able to do, Centerstone sent staff to training for a, it's called Teen Intervene. And it's a three to six week session or three to six sessions um, with young people who are identified as low to moderate risk of developing a substance use disorder. And um, what this funding will allow us to do is create a true diversion for youth that Centerstone, we don't have to open up a probation case to access funding. Centerstone doesn't have to open up a file to access funding, but it can be a, a true diversion opportunity where we are paying for those sessions. Young people can go get the assistance, support, education they need without becoming deeper and deeper involved in our system. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Jones, comments, no. questions? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? That this sounds like an incredible program. It really does. Um, and um, really wonderful idea. Um, thank it, you. And this is new. This is not anything we've seen in the mm -hmm. past, if I recall. Is that correct? This is correct. This is brand spanking new. Oh, good. Good, good, good. I, I look forward to seeing it put in place, too. Um, is there any public comment on this? 
Seeing none, call for a vote on the MOU with Centerstone. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item, please. I move approval of a memorandum of understanding with Girls Inc. Fund name JDAI performance grant, fund number 9163 in the amount of $13,800. Second. Thank you. Again, Ms. McVie. Yes. Um, I apologize. I want to back up just one step and let you all know that the funding for this came from performance grant award, which once means once again, Monroe County um, and our community efforts did extraordinarily well on our um, grant review. And so in response to that, we were given additional funds to continue doing the good work. So hats off to all of you watching, certainly those of you in the room and our community for really rising up and supporting our local JDAI efforts. So Girls Incorporated is, has agreed to partner with us and will be providing at no cost to young people or families after school programming in two sessions. So they will be offering um, evidence-based programming on Tuesdays and Wednesdays for five week session and then an eight week session. And um, this will, again, trying to create a true diversion opportunity. This will be open to middle school age young people in our community. We're kind of working out the logistics right now as far as getting them there, getting them home, transportation, those kinds of things. Um, but Girls Inc. has been a community partner for years and years. We reached out to Girls Inc. because we were seeing an uptick in young lady referrals, particularly that 12 to 14 years of age. Um, and oftentimes those things were due to some sort of conflict, either domestic in the home relationship or conflict with other peers. And what Girls Inc. will be working on with these young people are things like conflict resolution, things like anger management, things like goal setting, things like um, learning how to negotiate and compromise, all while at Girls Inc. and hopefully having fun and enjoying themselves and um, at least for my kids, the best learning that ever happened was when they didn't know they were learning. So that's really the environment that Girls Inc. is staged to set up. What a wonderful explanation. Thank you. Uh, questions or comments? Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Commissioner Thomas? No, thank you. No, this is, this is fabulous again. Um, and I think Girls Inc. Has, has proven over the years to provide a lot of good programming for the, the young women in our community. So, yes, is there any public comment? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of approving the MOU with Girls Inc. signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Next item. I move approval of an agreement with Impact Solutions, fund name JDAI performance grant, fund number 9163 in the amount of $6,000. Second. Thank you, Ms. McPhee. And no JDAI story is complete unless we have an opportunity to talk about data and data-driven decisions. Um, Tableau is a software program that does an amazing job at visualization of data so that non-data people like me can make sense of the numbers and the trends. Um, Impact Solution has some very, very skilled staff that that support our efforts in getting that data into the visualization. Um, I oftentimes say I'm a Tableau, maybe C minus student and they are PhD students. So this agreement will allow us to continue to partner, continue to help develop local skills with Tableau, but also make sure that when we have data that we're able to show it and tell a real story with it, not just simply spreadsheets and numbers. Thank you. Questions or comments from my colleagues? No, this is all about evidence-based programming, right? Perfect. Any public comment? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the Impact Solutions Agreement signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Thank you, Ms. McAfee. Thanks for Thank all you all. Been so much. Good to see you. Okay, I believe um, it's the beginning of the year and we have some appointments. 
oh, yes, we do. <laughs> and rather than make them one at a time, I'm going to read through a list um, and there will be further appointments needed in the future. Um, but uh, a move um, approval of these appointments and reappointments um, to the following uh, boards and commissions. M. Davis Ogin, Alcoholic Beverage Board, one year term expires 1231, 2023. Kenneth Buzzard to the Animal Management Board, three year term expires 1231, 2025. Mike Campbell to the Convention and Visitors Commission, one year term expires 1231. 2023. Angie Purdy to the Child Protection Team. One year term expires January 1st, 2024. Uh, Ginger Davis to the Drainage Board. This is a four year term, which expires December 31st, 2026. Uh, Nolan Hendon to the Environmental Commission. Uh, two year term expires February 1st, 2025. Um, Angie Purdy and Jeff Cockrell to the Internal Control Oversight Committee, a one-year term, which expires January 1st, 2024. Rick Crouch to the Licensing Board. This is a four-year term that expires January 1st, 2027. Jeffrey Morris to the Plan Commission, four-year term, expires January 1st, 2027. Um, Randy Cassidy, Richard Martin, and Jim Shelton uh, to the Redevelopment Commission. This is a one-year term that expires January 1st, 2024. And to, to the Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission, Penny Githens, Kathy Hewitt, Sarah Larson, Karen Renbeck, Nick Voiles, and Patty Cunningham. These are two-year terms, which expire January 1st, 2025. And to the Women's Commission, um, Molly Ott, for a two-year term, which expires January 1st, 2025. Second. Thank you. That was a lot. That was. <laughs> Is there any question or comments on this? Any public questions or comments rather? <laughs> Sorry, still keep trying to get this down. Um, I, I wanna thank everybody who agrees to serve. Um, these are citizen boards, many of them, and we're, we're very lucky to have the input of people in our community. So um, there's nothing else. I'd like to call for a vote on approval of these appointments. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes three to zero. Okay. And um, the commissioners typically serve on a lot of other boards and commissions. And so um, I'd like to make an, a motion that um, Lee, Jones, Commissioner Lee Jones, be appointed to the Emergency Management Advisory Board. It's a two-year term expiring December 31st, 2024, and the Community Corrections Advisory Board, which is a four-year term expiring uh, December 31st, 2026. Um, appoint Julie Thomas, Commissioner Julie Thomas, to the Metropolitan Planning Organization, um, and that, um, I guess that's I'll second that. Okay, that's enough. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Is there any discussion? No? Then all those in favor, say, signify by saying aye. 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 Passes three to zero. I will note for the record that um, Commissioner Jones will continue to serve on the Environmental Commission and the Drainage Board, neither of which are up for renewal yet. Um, Commissioner Thomas attends the Lake Monroe Water Quality Steering Committee meetings and Monroe County Health Equity Council. Um, I've been attending the uh, internal trail group and the parks board meetings along with the BEDC, uh, downtown Bloomington Inc. and heading home. Uh, and that's in addition to the fact that we all three serve on the stormwater board and on the solid waste district board. So, um, we don't have time to sit still, do we? <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. So um, we do have some announcements. Um, there still are some openings for boards and commissions, not a lot at this point, but we encourage you to apply for things that you are interest might be interested in. We have blood drives scheduled through our emergency management department. These are, will occur at IB Tech. They're 
Cross blood drives. If you're interested, please register at redcross.org. They're being held on Thursday, February the 16th at 1 to 6 p.m. at Ivy Tech. On Friday, February 17th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Then in March 8th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And Friday, March the 10th from 1 to 6. I also want to remind people that financial assistance is available through um, township trustees. Every resident of Monroe County lives within a township. And if you need assistance with rent, with utilities, things like that, that often come up in the wintertime, please contact your, count, your township trustee. Information on how to do that is available in our meeting notes and also at the county website, which is co.monroe.in.us. Um, also, since it's still winter, I'd like to urge people to sign up for the Monroe County alert, uh, Emergency Alert System, which you can do through our website. And finally, um, remind everyone that next Monday, January the 16th, is Martin Luther King Day. And I hope you'll take the opportunity to have a day on, not a day off, to do something that will improve the lives of those around you. Uh, are there any other questions, or I'm sorry, any other announcements from my colleagues. Um, if I might take a moment of personal privilege and ask for a moment of time, I appreciate it. Um, um, I am really uh, happy to be at the end of four years of serving as president of this board, um, which is a long time. And um, you know, you think back and you go, oh yeah, there was a tornado and yes, there was flooding and oh yes, there was COVID, by the way. Um, but, you know, it's this board has uh, never ceased to amaze and inspire me. Um, and I'm just really grateful for my colleagues who I get to work with every day, every week, and our staff who are incredible, uh, hardworking people. And uh, everybody is focused on the needs of Monroe County residents. And that's that's who we are. And that's what we do. And Local government is, I think, the best form of government because we are um, the the closest form of government to the people outside of townships, and um, we we really uh, do care. And I think that was evidenced in a lot of the ways that uh, this board and this county and the council responded to uh, the COVID nineteen pandemic, for example. But um, I just did the new year. It's it's a great time to to thank everyone for all their hard work, everyone in county government who works every day on behalf of Monroe County residents. Uh, we did make some progress at the end of last year on um, assigning some ARPA funding to particular projects. Uh, that is a really uh, great experience, and uh, we get to do more of that in a few weeks at the next uh, council meeting to talk through that with our colleagues there. Um, this year, um, we do have the county development ordinance where I imagine and hope that great strides will be made um, toward um, completing that process. And again, lots of public input is needed and asked for and um, solicited in various ways. Um, that's going to be a really important project because that's the future of Monroe County, um, keeping rural, rural and urban, urban. Um, uh, and um, I feel like I uh, we had a we had an incredible experience uh, with some people who gave a lot of their time and expertise to us uh, in Arizona. And we looked at three different facilities. Um, uh, that was um, eye-opening, and it was a great learning experience, and um, thank those folks for um, their generosity of time. Uh, we do have a lot more work to do on um, community justice and um, moving forward. Um, I think that um, while everybody has, appears to have the best interests of the community at heart. Um, I think we um, really have to walk a very fine line um, in the next year or so between haste um, and paralysis by analysis. And uh, that's going to be a tough one. Um, 
but as Commissioner Jones rightly pointed out, we can't make everyone happy, uh, but we have to do the right thing uh, for our community. And uh, yes, public input, uh, the input of um, experts and practitioners and staff in this community is vital, but there's an issue of timing. We don't want to, um, you know, focus on things that are outside of uh, the project scope right now. And at the same time, we do need to think about the big picture. So all of this is about walking a very, very fine line. And um, I just want to thank uh, Commissioner Jones for her work on that committee and uh, my colleagues for that uh, really amazing visit to Arizona. Um, that was really a great experience. Um, and I also do want to say I look forward to um, Commissioner Githin's service as president and um, continuing work with both of my colleagues, the council and staff and everyone else in the new year. And thank you all so much. Thank you. And thank you for your four years. Um, I, I, I don't want to be the one that follows you, quite frankly. It's, <laughs> uh, but um, thank you. Um, at this point, I think we're adjourned. Our next meeting will be January the 18th, 2023. And how about if we come back for our work session at 1115? That'll work. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Thank you all.